Welcome to episode 54 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I'll show you how you can create vector designs. You can generate them from a prompt, but you can also make sketches and convert them into vector SVG designs. You can even use rough sketches to get a lot of variations from them. It really helps save a lot of time when designing vectors. I will use FluxDev and Context today, but first we need a node I showed you in episode 32. The node has been updated, so I designed better workflows that create vectors the way I want using the new Flux models. The node is called Comfy UI to SVG. I already have it installed, but you can use the install button and then restart Comfy. Let's start with the basics. If you double click on the canvas, you can search for load image and add that node to the canvas. You can upload an image using this button. Then search for the SVG and you'll see a lot of nodes with the blue diamond icon. Let's search for image quantize. There are multiple nodes with that name, but I'll use this one for now. Now I can connect my image to that node. And of course we can preview or save the image after it exits that node. I'll add a preview since this is just for testing. When I run the workflow, you can see I get a new image with fewer colors, 16 colors to be exact. If I increase the number to 50, the result will have only 50 colors. If I reduce it to five, it will only show five. This node will be useful later when we want to adjust our images before they are converted to vectors. But working with color vectors is always a mess. Too many shapes, and it's hard to make them look professional. That's why I like to work with black and white vectors. I'll add this node that converts the image to a black and white SVG. There is one for color too, but I won't use that since I prefer clean vector files. So now, after I reduce the number of colors, I can convert it to a black and white image. There's a node that lets us preview what it does, called SVG String Preview. If I run the workflow, you can see how the final image will look. Obviously, this portrait is too complex and detailed, but you'll see in a few minutes how we can fix that using AI. Right now, we didn't save any vector or image, we just previewed the result. What I want to do next is save that SVG file using this node. Now, when I run the workflow, it will save the SVG file. If I look in the output folder, you can see the file there. You probably don't have a preview for it. It's just an Internet Explorer icon. You can open it in the browser or with a vector software like Illustrator or Inkscape. This part was just to introduce you to the node and show how you can convert an image to a vector. I also prefer to save the PNG image of the result, not just the SVG, because maybe I want to use Photoshop to fix some mistakes and then convert it to SVG again. So I'll add this node called SVG string to image, and then I can add a save image node so the image gets saved. That will let me save both the PNG and the SVG file. If you try to generate again, nothing happens. Since this doesn't use a seed, it's not really AI, it's just a conversion. So you need to change some settings to get a different version. Now in the output folder, I can see both the SVG and PNG with those changes. Let me show you the workflows I prepared for today. You can download all of them for free from Discord. For this simple workflow that just converts an image to vector, you can see it only uses two custom nodes for manager. From load image, you can load your image, like this cat, for example. Then you can reduce the number of colors. The image gets traced, similar to Live Trace in Illustrator. After that, it's saved as an SVG file and also as a PNG file. So now we have a black and white vector version, and you can compare the before and after in this node. If you have a clear black and white image, this workflow will give you a nice SVG file. And if it's a color image, you can try reducing the colors and playing with the settings to see how you can improve the vector result. For some colors, like the gray tones in this cat image, it sees them as black, which is why you can't see the result clearly. It didn't have enough contrast in the final colors. So you can increase the number of colors until you get the result the way you want. But let's move on to AI since we can do much more than this. I created some Flux workflows that you can use to generate images and convert them to vector. I included the Nunchaku version, check the Nunchaku episode to see how to use it, and also the regular Flux workflow. I'm using Nunchaku to show the example since it's way faster. If I run this workflow, you can see it generates an image and then converts it to vector. It's clean and nice. Not all the seeds are perfect, but with a few tries you can get some cool designs. In the output folder, you can see both the SVG and PNG file. I can open the SVG file with Adobe Illustrator, and you can see it's made from points. So you can zoom in as much as you want, save it at any size, and it will never be pixelated. It's always clear. This is great for engraving, cutting, printing, and all kinds of crafts that need a clean design. And of course, it's editable. You can move points around and make it perfect for your needs. Sometimes it can have more points than needed, so I like to go to Object, and from the Path menu, I select Simplify. 
Then I can drag the slider to remove more or fewer points until I like how it looks. Now it has fewer points, easier to work with. And if you use a laser machine, it will cut faster from wood and other materials. Always check the note on the left to see what nodes and models are needed to run the workflow. Check previous episodes for more detailed instructions. What makes this workflow fit my needs is the Laura I created called SVG style. Here are some trigger words you can use to get clean black designs, but the main trigger word you need is SVG style. That alone doesn't always generate results the way I want, so I added extra words. If I remove those extra words and test the workflow, you'll see I get a vector design, but it's in color instead of black. Still, it has a nice flat style. On the right, the nodes for converting to vector didn't bring any results because when it was converted to black and white, all the values were gray, not black. I can disable the LoRa by right-clicking and selecting Bypass. Now with the same seed and same prompt, the result will be different. It's just a standard flux generation. But as soon as I add the rest of the words, I should get a clean vector style design. First, it generates the image, then the number of colors is reduced, the image is traced, and we get the SVG file, with the PNG also saved in the output folder. You can see the gray colors are lost and only black and white go through into the final vector file. The cat has two tails in this seed, so just change the seed and try again until you get a better version. If you still want color, just add that node and replace the black and white one with the color version. It should then generate color vectors as well. Let me show you how I created the SVG style LoRa for the Flux model. I used the OpenArt AI website since I had some credits left there. If you go to the Models tab, you can use the button to train your own model. You can train a style, face, character, or object. I chose style, then gave it a name. And in the description, I also wrote SVG style. But when you train your own, describe your specific style. Then you upload the images, choose the number of steps, and start training your model. You'll get something like this. If I click on the three dots, I can download the model, but they don't give any instructions on how to use it or with what base model. For me, it works well with the Flux Dev model, just like you see in this video. Let me show you what training images I used. I created a bunch of 1024 pixel images in a vector style. You can see they all have the same look. I made them with Adobe Illustrator for some bundles I sell on Etsy and other shops. In the note on the left, you can download this LoRa 2 and place it in the LoRa's folder and use it like I do. Let's try another workflow. Instead of generating an image, why not use AI to improve our sketches or designs and get more variations? Again, there are regular and Nunchaku version workflows. This workflow lets you upload an image and get a variation of it. So if I load that image, and use the same LoRa to adjust the style and add this prompt, I can adjust the denoise value to control how different the result should be. If I try with 0.7 for denoise, I get something like this. You can see it's a little different, but not by much. So I can get subtle adjustments, and because I kept the seed fixed, I can play around with more settings to control how I want that to be saved. You can also switch to randomize, and each time you'll get a different variation. If I increase the denoise value to 0.8, the variation will be much more different. As you can see, it got more creative. But let me show you how I actually use this workflow to get unique designs exactly how I want them. I use Photoshop, but you can use other software or even sketch on paper. I create a new square document with a white background. Then I create a new layer where I sketch what I have in mind. I use a hard brush for this. And since I want something symmetrical, I activate vertical symmetry so what I draw on one side also appears on the other. I want to create something like a warrior helmet maybe something evil with horns. It doesn't have to be perfect. And as you'll see, it still works even if the sketch is rough. I flatten the image, select all, and copy it, but you can also save it locally from PSD without flattening. Then select the load node and paste it, or just load it from your drive. For the prompt, I usually just write a few words about what I want. In this case, I just write evil helmet. Let's try with a denoise value of 0.75 to see how it works and run the workflow. If I compare before and after, Look how much smoother and clearer it is. It fixed my sketch in a few seconds. I try another seed and get a different variation. How cool is that? I get an instant PNG and also a vector file each time. You can see both in the output folder. A clear and nice SVG file. Great for logos, crafting, t-shirt design, and all kinds of projects. Try increasing the denoise value to get more variation. For example, with 0.82, I got something like this for the seed, and for another seed, I got this one that looks pretty amazing considering the rough sketch. Let's move to the next workflows that use flux context to create vectors. For example, I have the sketch I did. Sometimes you draw in that style with lines, but you want a flat vector shape instead filled with black, not like a coloring page. 
And the result is this one. See how my sketch was converted into a perfect black shape. To be able to achieve that, I trained a Flux Context LoRa using the same methods as in episode 53. You can download the LoRa from here and place it in the LoRa's folder. So if I go back to Photoshop and let's say I take a pencil brush and sketch something random, not sure yet what I want, maybe just a decorative ornament or something, and then I can use that sketch here. Depending on the sketch, you can add some extra words in the prompt if you want. The result is something like this for this seed. I want more filled shapes, so maybe I try another seed. And I got something like this. Not bad. Let me try another one to see if I can get something better. Yeah, I think I can work with that. Yeah. And the cool part is that now you can use Flux to get variations of that sketch using the previous workflow. So I can copy the image and go to the previous workflow and paste it into the load image node. Maybe I add vintage ornament in the prompt. Let's reduce the denoise a little, and the result is this one. Let's try a different seed. Yeah, maybe something like that might work. So have fun and try different variations. Let's go back to the context workflow. Even though it was trained on sketch to vector, it can do more than that. For example, if I load this cat image and run the workflow, I get a vector cat image. Depending on the seed, some versions are more similar to the original than others. Let me try another seed. Now it looks much more similar to the original. So if I load a portrait of a woman, it should be able to create a vector version of her. I got something like this, which is not bad and keeps the proportions quite well. Let's try this statue of a bunny to see if it works. And it did pretty well. You can also train your own LoRa on the vector style you usually work with or on your sketches to speed up your workflow. To train the LoRa, I use the FAL AI website. You just add the pairs. You can see how it starts with a sketch and ends with a vector shape design. I used around 14 pairs and also included some sketch to vector examples so it works with sketches too, and two photos so it can learn how to convert from photo as well. I opened all and made sure each one starts with a sketch and ends with a vector style. For steps, I use 1000, but you can go higher if you have more than 15 pairs. For trigger words, I use convert this image to black vector silhouette. Don't forget to click on more and change from fall to comfy so it's compatible with comfy UI. Then start training. In about half an hour, the training was done. Click on show files and you can download the LoRa and rename it how you want. You can use the converter from the previous episode to make it Nunchaku compatible. Check the latest episodes since they're all connected. And while you're here, I also added a store for those who want to support me and get something real in return, like a t-shirt, a cap, a mug, or maybe some stickers. I'll add more when I have some free time, which I rarely have. Thank you to everyone who joined the membership. By the way, if you joined and didn't get the role on Discord, mention Pixaroma there on a channel or send me a private message. There was a sync issue in the last few days and I had to do it manually. So if it happens again, let me know. Try reconnecting your Discord with YouTube. Thank you legends for all your support and don't forget to leave a like and a comment to help with the algorithm. Have a great day and I'll see you on Discord.